Okay, welcome back to our study of finding volumes through rotating solids around various axes. And hopefully you're starting to see these objects spinning on the axis. You have a little, little uh, easier time visualizing things. And now we're going to complicate things on you a little bit. We'll mess with you a little bit more. Let's see if I'm sure you should be able to handle this now. We start to, to complicate things a little. We're going to move the axis of rotation when we're finding these things. Okay. And we've got basically three things we're going to look at here. A, B, and C. And we try to draw. See how this goes. See if I've got enough space and you can follow this. First thing I'm going to do is just go around the x-axis. The x-axis, right? We're just we're going right around. I better get a color here. Go around this green axis. Notice that's the same thing as saying y equal to 0. Okay? That's the standard one you're used to. And again, when you rotate this thing, you're going to see you get a cross-sectional areas that look like this cross-sections. This is A of X. Right? My cross-sections, when I rotate this, this is going to be a hollowed-out bowl. My inside radius, where I cut out, that's going to be what? That's G of X. My outside radius is F of X. Okay, so if I was going to integrate this, this becomes, I don't know, let's just call this 0, x equal to 0. Let's say that x is equal to 4. Okay, just for grins here. So we're going to go from 0 to 4, and it's going to be a of x, cross-sectional of washers dx. That's going to be what? Well, pi f of x squared. My, that's the outside radius squared minus the inside radius squared. What does that all come from? That's the area, the cross-sectional area. Okay, fine, good. Got that one. No problem. You've been doing that all along. I think Khan did show you one of these complications here, but he didn't do the other one. So, What about this? Okay, this is y equal to minus 1. Well, now... This whole thing is spinning here, right? It's the same kind of shape, but actually now there's no... It's it, This will actually hold water. This has got a hole in the middle completely. This is a completely kind of a bushing thing. And there's a cylindrical hole through it. But if you, if you cut the cross-sectional area, you would still do the following, right? I'd still draw the inner and the outer. They're a little bigger now. The radiuses are bigger. What is this? That's kind of the key thing. What is that radius? That is this. That distance here, right? What is that distance? That inner radius is g of x. It's really a minus, a minus 1. Minus, a minus 1. So that's g of x plus 1. That's the inner radius. Okay, so the inner radius of my washer, and again, this is, what am I doing? This is an A. I'm trying to get the cross-sectional area. The inner is G of X plus 1. Well, what's the outer? Let's change this. What is this radius? That distance here happens to be this distance there, right? And what is that? What's the blue rate? What's the outer radius? That's f of x. Again, minus a minus 1 or f of x plus 1. Okay, so I still have the same cross sectional area. What's changed? Just the radii. So my integral becomes pi 0 to 4. And it's just going to be f of x plus 1, right? That's squared minus, and maybe I'll change colors, g of x plus 1 squared. 
change colors, the whole thing dx. Okay, that is my integral. Okay, so you see what happens when I change from the axis being at y equal to 0 or the x-axis and I slid it down. Well, what did I do? I basically um, made all the radius bigger. I made everything bigger, right? I added 1 to it, which kind of makes sense. Kind of makes sense. So let me get myself a little more room here. For this next one's a little crazy. Next one's a little crazier, and see if you can figure this one out. See if you could do this one. If you want to stop the video and try this on your own, you're always allowed to do that. Okay, so anyway, this I'm going to put the I'm going to put this up here, and I'm going to assume f of x does not cross it. This is y equal to five. It's up here. Okay, now I'm spinning this whole thing. Think about this. Things have changed quite a bit here. Now I'm spinning it like that. Okay, I'm rotating it around an axis. I still have a cross section. That's a my cross section is still a washer. So I guess we've been doing these in green. I still have a washer. I've got an inner radius and an outer radius. But now what's my inner radius? See the let me just draw you start from here. Look at what the inner, I start from that and I draw to here, right? That is the distance. That's the, it's that curve that's going to be carving out the middle of this thing. That is this inner radius here, right? Okay, right, I'm trying to find A of X. Now the key is, what is that? This blue line is this. Well, what is it? It's... What is this length here? Well, you'd say it's 5. It's 5. It's That's 5, right? Always 5. And then I'm going to subtract off this. So it's 5 minus f of x. See that? That's the inner radius. What is the outer radius? this line here and if you understood why this was 5 minus x then you would then you'd understand that that radius here is what well that radius is just going to be 5 minus g of x okay 5 minus g of x well again i'm just going to integrate a of x dx from 0 to 4. But now what do I got? I guess I better do the, uh, I'll do the red here. That's going to be what? 0 to 4. 5 minus g of x squared. I better keep my pi out front. Minus my inner radius. 5 minus f of x squared and the whole thing times dx and dx and you know what I used to be able to, I used to be a lot more clever at this thing let's see if I can do this slide that over oh yeah slide it over let's clean it up a bit let's get that dx because a lot of students like to forget that dx I'm not going to let it happen that is actually the width of my washer, right? This is a volume. This better always be positive, okay? So anyway, here we've got nine and a half minutes. Notice what we've done. We've complicated things quite a bit. We took a, a simple problem. We started off rotating it around the y-axis or the x-axis, or y equal to zero, this is what you started with. Then we move the axis lower. When we move the axis lower, all it did was it made the, um, the radii larger by one. Kind of makes sense. Now, though, I took the axis and put it on top 
which actually flipped what the inside and the inside and outside radius were defined by the other function there. Okay, so you'd see the in, the outside radius is five minus g of x. The inside is five minus f of x. Okay, if you can handle those kind of problems, you can move axis in and out. If you if you understand, you absolutely need to understand why I draw a line from the axis of rotation to that outer function and how I come up with those radii definitions. That's crucial. And if you don't, come by and see me and we'll draw them up together slower. Okay, see you soon. Bye-bye.